In your team are now on the field and they're really ready for their big challenge uh, against Galway this afternoon. Uh, as our panellists and analysts were saying earlier on, their supporters are very confident of success, but will they succeed? That's the big question. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be caught by the time <laughs> the season is finished. However, there's a big test ahead of them today. We're just saying, gentlemen, that whoever plays into this near goal here, the canal end goal, the first half beat Finnerty, will have problems because it's very sticky down there. It is. It's very heavy in the canal end and... It Traditionally, it is the wetter side of the field. Uh, up towards the hill, we could see in the minor game, that's where the livelier hurling was done. And the miners are losing their footing here in the corner. It's going to be vital who wins the toss and who plays not into that in, in the first half. You don't want to be playing there in the second half because if you're trying to chase a game and you've bad underfoot conditions, the backs will get on top. So really, it'd be an advantage to play into the canal end for the first half and have the scoring goal for the second half. Yeah, well, the toss will decide all that to Mossimo Cahey, obviously. Now, a change on the Galway team. Pete might just come back to you on this one. Fergal Healy is uh, in, the, in the corner. Yeah, all week we've been waiting for somebody to be selected at corner forward, and there was no word of an injury to Healy. So I thought the, it was unusual not to name him earlier on. Now, Fergal played here last year, and there was high expectations after he played in the league. He was absolutely brilliant. And maybe he's just one of these players that gets too nervous beforehand, and maybe they didn't tell him until this morning, Fergal, you're in there, he has less time to worry about it. Now, I think you may see Alan Kearns going out around the middle of the field, and we'll leave a two-man inside in the full forward line and give room to Eugene Clunan and Fergal Healy. There's also the speculation to Moss McCahey that they might put Joel Rabbit uh, in, into the full forward line. Yes, I mean, uh, certainly if, if Gal were to win this today, I mean, they need to make an impact on the Kilkenny backline. Kilkenny backline have been superb all year as well. The likes of Eamon Kennedy, certainly Philip Larkin and Peter Barry are tremendous hurlers. And uh, it, it's interesting. I, I, I would hope to see Galway start with a 15-man 15 uh, man players in their, in their right positions, yeah. right? Go, adopting this kind of third-man midfield. It has worked on occasions from yeah. sometimes it has backfired on uh, uh, more occasions than not, you know. Start it and see how the game is going. If you need to drift the guy out after that, you can actually do so at that, at that point in the game. Um, the, the big thing I suppose for Kilkenny, their starman up to now has been Charlie Carter, right? If Charlie is held today, DJ hasn't been having the best year by his own standards. Um, uh, Henry Shefflin hasn't set the world on fire as well. And we talk about this full forward line for Kilkenny, they're, they're the all conquering full forward line. Charlie is the man that has been scoring five and six points from play in, in their last number of championship games. And if somebody ties down Charlie, it's up to the others then to contribute with the scores. But I suppose the big boost for Kilkenny is having John Power on the 40 again. He's going to be tenacious, he's going to be hard in the tackle, and he's going to shift an awful lot of punishment. And he's the man with, that will drive the balls forward into that full forward line. So if Galway half back line can dominate there and stop the possession going into the full forward line, they'll have a great chance. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Well, we saw Charlie Carter going through a shot there. Also, the two captains and the referee, uh, Pat O'Connor, today refereeing this big match. Cyril Farrell has some more thoughts on this game, too. And he is with our match commentator, Jack. Canning. Indeed he is. I'm sure that he has uh, many, many thoughts on this. And first of all, the condition of the pitch up just at the top end. You've walked down there and it is in very poor condition after yeah. yesterday. Yeah, Jerry, it's, it's very, very soft. It's a lot softer than people think. Looking out here on television looks lovely looking down at it. But like uh, from the 40, about 45 yards in, it's very, very soft, especially as you go out the far tunnel. So I'd agree with Pete there, like whoever's playing into that end, like they'll have to work very hard to keep the ball in there because it doesn't suit forwards. Probably doesn't suit backs either. But definitely the, the end facing into the hill 16 and that's where the open hurling should be done and uh, whoever wins the toss really like it will have a big bearing on the game as such like but Kilkenny look very settled here from the very start our fellas go we might just move a few around just try to unsettle them but they're you know Kilkenny are the champions it's hard to do that they certainly are the champions as we take a check on the two teams for this second semi-final Kilkenny are in the enviable position I suppose they've been able to name a very strong side in defense of their All-Ireland title three changes from last time out against Wexford the first is in the back line, where Peter Barry has recovered from a hand injury and joins a distinguished half-back line, which includes Philly Larkin and Eamon Kennedy. Brian McAvoy has been moved back to midfield. And it's a restructured half-forward line today, showing captain John Hoyne on the right, John Power is on the 40, and Stephen Grehan on the left as a replacement for Dennis Byrne, who was a star, of course, remember, against Galway just 12 months ago. Galway have won the toss. They were going to play from left to right. That's Brian McAvoy there, all-star, of course. Had a wonderful year last year. So the champions have nine different clubs represented, from goalkeeper up to the second midfielder. Michael Healy is this year's full-back, fronted by his captain, Liam Hodgins. Derek Hardiman wears the number five shirt, while Richie Murray is David Tierney's partner in midfield. 
The attacking aces include Joe Rabbit on the right, in form Kevin Broderick on the left, and Eugene Clunan in there at full forward. The gap left in the left corner is filled by Fergal Healy. So a big day for him, a big day for all of these players, a place in the final on the 9th of September, just three Sundays away against Tipperary at stake. crowd here today, I would estimate around about 30,000, not quite sure it's as large as the crowd that was here yesterday, Cyril, hard to judge I know, it's such a big place. Yeah, it doesn't, you see Joe, you could have 50,000 here now at the moment and totally feel it, like yesterday as well, a lot of the Wexford fans especially got caught in the traffic and it was nearly half time before they got in, I suppose about 30, 35,000, quite a good crowd for, for this kind of a game. Lots of key battles this afternoon, but uh, the Galway full-back line in particular, they'll know they're up against the best around right now in that full-forward line of Carter, DJ and Henry Shefflin. Yeah, if a lot of ball comes in there, Galway will be under pressure, but Galway Jar will try to cut off the supply from midfield, and that's why you'll probably find that they'll probably play three midfielders out there trying to cut it out, and it'll give room inside to the likes of uh, Thune and Fergal Healy. Now, Fergal Healy is a very good touch hurler, and all probability they left him off because he's a nervous kind of guy, and maybe it'll suit him not to know he was on the team and just jumped him in now. There's big expectations of him as such, but like Kilkenny are strong everywhere and they have a half ball and pick up Hine, Power and Graham. May not have much scoring power as such, they get an odd point here and there, but their main thing will be that they get the ball into the three boys inside, Charlie, DJ and Henry. And they're, they're the three really that was up most of the damage. There's a couple of inexperienced lads too on this Galway team. I'm thinking about Derek Hardiman from Mullia, which is Pete Finnerty's club, of course, and Richie Murray, who was the captain of the minors last year from St. Thomas's. Yeah, Derek comes from Mullia, Club, playing in Pete's old jersey number five. He has a great pedigree, great bit of stuff, and like, loves to tear into the game. Whereas Richie Murray would probably be rated probably the best minor in Galway since the likes of Joe Cooney came along. Richie is, is very good, like, if he can get onto his game, then he maybe scoring a pop and a pint to from out there. Kind of a natural flow in hurler. Be interested to see how he gets on to do with Comfort and McAvoy. Like, it's Brian, uh, Brian McAvoy seems back to his best and the comfort is probably coming back to his best from a knee injury last year it's going to have a big bearing on there if Galway can get a top out there of course it's become the thing in recent years to throw in young lads almost straight out of minor like Richie Murray we're mentioning but well, Eugene Clunan as well he's a real star up there at full forward and I remember when you were in charge of the uh, under 21 team you actually played him in goal at one stage in an All-Ireland final that's true Ger. we had no goal he recognised goal as such Clunan is a very good touch hurler as great race he had played under age rather than along, along the line when he'd be say under playing under 16, he might be only 14 years of age, put him in there, of course he didn't love it as such, but he actually won an All-Ireland in there, very few people, you know, kind of realise that or even think about it now. He's a natural, but he's up against today, because inside there you'll have Noel Hickey and Cavan and Delaney, and they're playing very well as well, they'll attack the ball as such, but Eugene has a good record in Crow Park, usually scores a lot for both club and county. Well, they were telling me yesterday here that Kilkenny are going to be uh, supported by about 20,000 fans here, it's uh, very much the number one sport, of course, in that particular county, the Leinster champions, All-Ireland champions. And now there is going to be a moment's silence in memory of uh, two people, Bill Cahill, who was full forward on the Kilkenny team in the 1947 All-Ireland final against Cork, who passed away recently, and also Joe Walsh, who was secretary of the hurling board in Kilkenny for 21 years.
national anthem was taking place there, the two Galway midfielders were arm in arm. It's Pat O'Connor from Limerick, who handled, of course, last Sunday's drawn semi-final between Tipperary and Wexford, who's in charge here. He was also in charge of this year's Leinster final. Kilkenny versus Wexford. So the action about to commence in the second of the Guinness hurling semi-finals. Three weeks from final day itself to see who'll take home the Liam McCarthy Cup. And it's already getting physical in midfield. McAvoy there and Richie Murray even before the ball is thrown in. And David Tierney responding accordingly. John Powers will hold the ball open already. The referee wants to take action. He probably wants to turn the ball a little bit faster because he likes to just square him up to another. Just well, like John, ball. John Powers going across to get a replacement stick even before the ball has been thrown into the match. There's a lot of tension about. It's underway. Galway playing from left to right in the first half. First attack in towards Eugene Clune and stopped by James McGarry. Whipping it down towards David Tierney. Getting the stick to it. Played in by Andy Comerford. Over there is John Hoyne, who's the Kilkenny captain this year. David Tierney is stripped, taken down by Andy Comerford. And it's a free to Galway. It's a very pleasant day here. Whatever light breeze there is about today is supporting Kilkenny for the opening 35 minutes. And Eugene Clunan has certainly been to the Barbers. He usually wears a helmet as well. His chance then to put this one over the bar and give Galway the lead. He's put it wide. And Joe Rabbit shaping up to one of the backs in there. Maybe Peter Barry. And the referee has had to be very vigilant early on here. He's having a word, in fact, with Alan Kearns, but I saw Joe Rabbit also shaping up to somebody else. And Joe has switched positions. He's gone into top of the right. And coming out there is Alan Kearns to right half forward. In fact, he's almost a third midfield player. Peter Barry has followed him. McGarry's puck out. John Hoyne comes off the legs there of Cottle Moore. Driven forward there by Richie Murray, the former minor star. Under pressure here, the half-back line, led by Liam Hodgins, the captain. From Abby Donairy. Almost trying to drop hit that one away, but stopped. Here come the champions, Henry Shefflin, laying it off towards Andy Comerford. Here's a scoring chance for the Cats, and he's put it high, but he's put it to the left, and he's put it wide. It was a very good opportunity. Neither side really settling just yet. Well, in the past, the puckouts from Michael Crimmins will be targeted towards the right half forward position where Joe Rabbit would be stationed, but Rabbit's up in the corner right now. It'll hardly reach him. Up through the centre it comes towards Mark Kearns. Batted down by Tierney. Here's Mark Kearns again. Lobbed inside here to Richie Murray. Murray looking for the opening score, and it drops just short, and James McGarry is able to make the save. Thought of the hand pass out, does it the second time. And it's whipped away out of danger there. J.J. Delaney, cousin of P.J., former star. Back in by Michael Healy of Galway. Frantic opening start to the match. Difficult one to contain here. And that's Kevin Boderick going down under the weight of the uh, challenge. And the foul is penalised by a free into Galway. Brian McAvoy from James Stevens Had to go off in last year's All-Ireland final. In midfield today, he could be playing at the half-forward line. They could have opted to keep Canis Brennan in there as well. That was one of the options that the Kilkenny selectors faced. Eugene Clunan for Math and Rye. And, oh, it's just about... It's gone all the way in! It's a goal! My first thoughts were that it was dropping short, that it seemed like it might have been batted over the bar, but it's...
it's gone in beyond James McGarry. And a goal for Eugene Clunan with just about four minutes gone. He was going for a point. Shades of last year, I guess. It's Eugene Clunan's seventh ever goal in championship hurling in this his tenth match. What a start for Galway. Back from Kilkenny. Graham misses it. Misses it again. And it's gone wide. he was going for a point. Yeah, he was, Joe, but the thing is, like, Fortune's favour to Brave as such, it was a perfect... Here now you can see this, Kilkenny should have scored here, got three chances to hit and just put it wide. But Clunan's free dip shot at the last second and McGarry was caught. It's a perfect start for Galway because they have been jittery and have been kind of bumping off fellas and half-hitting fellas and getting fellas worked up. Once the game is settled down, you know, they have a lucky start and they can't complain. I think James McGarry will have nightmares about that one. That's back out by Eamon Kennedy. Pressurised. Mark Kearns is in there, so too Fergal Healy, we're in the green helmet, this is Mark Kearns. Big one up, Galway looking for another score, Joe Rabbit's about, and down he goes, but there was a, a falling of bodies as it were, an honest clash I think. Let's see what the referee will do, will he throw the ball in? At about, at about the 20 metre line. Yeah, he will, Jerry, because such a net ball goes in, the rabbit's so strong, it isn't going to come out that fast anyway, and at the moment the game is, is with Galway. Kennedy contesting with Joe Rabbit and there was a wild pull and the referee says free out to Kilkenny Peter Barry making his point there Peter had a bad hand injury missed the Leinster final James McGarry here made his debut against Leash in 1999 and that was the first goal he's conceded in this year's championship only six goals conceded in 10 championship matches. Pressure here on Michael Healy. Charlie Carter's in there. They try to work it in. Stephen Graham and John Hoyne around as well. And in the end, the referee decides that if the Galway backs were being fouled, there's Ollie Canning. Well, in recent years, Ollie Canning has certainly made that left back position his own. Here he is, the number four. But he did have a spell up on the half-forward line as well. And had a decent scoring record. Michael Crimmins, another one of the Athen Rye contingent. It's a great catch by Philly Larkin. Taken well here. Liam Hodgins shot partly blocked down. Galway coming again. That's Richie Murray. Angling this one across towards Kevin Broderick. Really caused a lot of confusion in the... Derry back line, but this time the foul, it's Fergal Healy who commits the foul and it's going to be a free out for Kilkenny and they're bringing their goalkeeper out to take it. John Power is uh, calling for attention in the middle of the field, may have a head injury, Brian Cody pacing up and down. It may well have been the block a little while ago here that caused the problem. Dr. Bill Cuddihy is out attending to John Power. John had a groin injury. Happily back and able to take his place once again. But with uh, seven and a half but it's gone, Kilkenny yet to score. John Power is OK. It'll be James McGarry to whip this one downfield for Kilkenny. Oh, that's a huge one. It travels a massive distance, and it's touched on the line, but it doesn't go over. And the referee has blown his whistle, and it's going to be a free in. It was a huge free by James McGarry, and the defence was uh, really in some disarray here. It just needed a nick, and Henry Shefflin was there to try and help it over, but couldn't quite make it. Kilkenny have the free, however. Yeah, what the, what the defense did, Joe, was to kill the ball as such. It's happening a good bit in Holland. I'd say the referees are kind of onto it now at the moment. If you kill the ball, it's a free as such. Well, we've seen it a few times in this year's championship. And quite correctly, the referee awarding the free in, and he's having a word. With uh, players on the back line, that's Gregory Kennedy there. DJ Carey's going to take it. Henry
Henry Shefflin had been taking these. DJ has scored 31 goals and 152 points in his career so far. Will he be happy with the point here? Will he try and bury it? He's giving it everything and it's stopped on the line by Michael Cummins. Out towards David Tierney, not a good pass outside, but Galway have it. And there, there was a foul committed there on Cahill Moore and it's a free out for the tribesmen. Yeah, Jerry, when you don't score them 21s, it rises a bit, rises the other team and Galway now, you know, they're on a high at the moment. Why would you not go for a point at this stage? Well, DJ felt he could score, but it's a good save. It's well hit, well blocked. And Michael Crimmins saves it well and gets down. And then once it's cleared, it's going to rise Galway. That's as good as a, you know, as good as a score for Galway. So. Well, they're really a goal down. There's only nine and a half minutes gone. And they have yet to score. Pressure here on Eamon Kennedy, a centre-half back. Galway attacking. Opportunities. And that's knocked over the bar brilliantly by Joe Rabbit. And Galway lead by a goal and a point to no score. Rabbit was alert to the possibilities here, got there ahead of Michael Kavanagh, stole it away from him and fired it over. Good work by Joe Rabbit. All eyes on the ball, great concentration, great accuracy. Back at the other end, it's Stephen Graham trying to make some advances. John Power is dragged back. Free to Kilkenny, and this time they are going to bring out Henry Shefflin because it's outside the 45 meter line and he will try and give Kilkenny a little bit more confidence in themselves by getting their first point. It's taken nearly 11 minutes. 1-1 one, one to a point. But overall, it's been a better opening by Galway. And they've had their chances, and that was a lovely bit of skill by Joe Rabbit. Michael Crimmins in his fifth championship match. Into the half-forward line, it bounces. Scooped ahead there by Richie Murray. Fergal Healy trying to get it on the stick. And the pitch will be a contributory factor here because it's so soft. A lot of divots about. A lot of uneven bounces. Alan Kearns will be back here next Sunday with the Galway footballers in their semi-final against Derry. And that's a second wide. No Lane, who'll be remembered, I know, by uh, many fans in Galway and Kilkenny for a certain goal that he scored in the All-Ireland Final back in 1987 down at the Hill 16 goal. He was on his hands and knees at that stage, I seem to remember, on a wretched day. Richie Murray up towards Eugene Clunan runs on beyond him. Rabbit trying to apply some pressure. One back, however, by J.J. Delaney. They work it out as far as Eamon Kennedy. Kennedy from Dunhamagan. Pressure on here, Liam Hodgins, used to play in the corner, now it's centre-half back, captaining the team as well. Joe Rabbit contesting there but losing out. Belted away downfield there by Noel Hickey, very accomplished full, full back for Kilkenny. And Graham sends the pass outside, it comes back here towards Henry Shefflin, taking a while about it and in the end he has put it wide. Three wides now for Kilkenny. They're playing like a team who have not had a championship match for all of six weeks. Nice bit of passing around the place there. Graham was involved, John Hoyne with the last pass, and Henry Shefflin putting it wide. Michael Grimmins has had some great days here, of course, in Croke Park, playing with Athan Rye, hoping today to secure his uh, passport to the All-Ireland Final next month. In the big one, that's a great catch. Philly Larkin trying to bustle his way out of trouble there. Andy Comerford coming in to help as well. That's Mark Curran's on the right-hand side, number 11. Whoops. Shaping up to one another. It's quite an edge to the game. Has been since the ball was, he was uh, about to be thrown in. Everybody being told to get back 13 metres. They rarely are when these balls are being thrown in. So it's Tierney there against Andy Comerford. 
Belted down by Philly Larkin. Antoine's John Power. Yet to see him come really into the action. Oof. Shows that he's very, very vexed with that. And it's going to be a free to Galway. John Power, I think, the guilty party. Once again, they bring out Eugene Clunan here. He's 65 metres out from the Kilkenny goal. Off the field, a very quiet, mild-mannered man. On the field, he uh, really gives it everything. That's Clunan's shot, and that has gone over the bar. Yeah, it's well in his radius, sir. Like he's scrawled them in club and county. And Galway will be very happy at the moment because they've upset, upset Kilkenny and they're kind of taking, making their pattern on the game. There's been a view, I know people in Galway haven't been saying it out loud, that if any team is going to upset Kilkenny, it's going to be the tribesmen. Long way to go. Good catch. Stephen Graham here. He's got support. Will he go for the point himself? He's going all the way. And he is fouled, and it's going to be a free-in on the 20-metre line. Galway are very annoyed, but the referee says there was a chop-down foul there on Stephen Graham. Seemed to be heading into a cul-de-sac there. And this time Henry Shefflin's going to take it, but this was the run here. Right through the heart of the defence, there was the stick going in. The referee says the foul was by Cahill Moore. And uh, he has his name ticked. Henry Shefflin looking for his second free second point. That's a good return from Henry Shefflin. Two expert free takers in the action here today in uh, Eugene Clunan and Henry Shefflin. A goal between them. And in case you've come in late, that goal was scored from a free by Eugene Clunan after four minutes of play. Comerford coming across to it. Oh, so too was uh, his midfield partner, Brian McAvoy. They lost it between them. Another chop down, and it's going to be a free in to Galway. That's a disappointment, Philly Larkin from James Stevens making his way back. Some more target practice for Eugene Clunan. Kilkenny can't afford to give away silly frees. Yeah, Jerry, he'll score all of these, there's no doubt about that. Still a young man, Eugene Clunan. And he has put in wide. But the person in Jerk has usually thought he'd scored him with his eyes shut. Well, he put the kibosh on him, I think, on that occasion. He's been Galway scoring sensation in recent years. Clunan is a son of Tom and, of course, a nephew of uh, Jarlith. All of them involved with the Athen Wright Club. That was dragged well to the right, well to the left. David Tierney rising up for this one. Cahill Moore is in there to help if he needs it. In beyond Peter Barry, gets it back, however. And it's uh, Brian McAvoy who is fouled, and it's going to be a free referee again, noting names. Henry Shefflin waiting inside, being marked by Gregory Kennedy. Gregory from Loch Ray. Kennedy hitting it in, and it's gone to the left. That's four wides now for Kilkenny. They haven't got into their rhythm yet. We haven't seen the explosive form of Henry Shefflin, DJ Carey and Charlie Carter up front. Yeah, to be fair, George, to the Galway midfielders and half back line, half forward line, they're tackling very hard and making sure there's very little ball coming in. Now, maybe it's a long layoff that Kilkenny had, but they're just not flowing yet. Up towards Mark Kearns this time. Eamon Kennedy is his marker. Michael Kennedy coming in, or Michael, uh, yeah, Michael Cavanaugh coming in. And the decision is going to go, uh, it's going to go Galway's way. I think the referee has overruled the linesman. Seemed like it was Michael Cavanaugh who got the last touch on it. And a line ball for Galway, which will be taken by David Tierney. The white helmet tends to mask the fact that he's got long, flowing, dark hair. Also has had a spell in the football team. Noel Hickey trying to get it away. Galway are menacing. And that's Alan Kearns, and he has put it to the left. Four wides now for Galway. 
They had a very good chance to go out and wide, and there are three points up, but they could rule all these misses because they could have at least five or six up at the moment. Tony Consolan there in the back of that group, just uh, in picture for a moment. Former Clare selector, along with Mike McDamara, of course, is now helping Noel Lane and John Connolly with Galway. Oof. Frontal charge there, and uh, it's going to be a free for Galway, and Andy Comerford is being called across by the referee. Shake of the head by Andy. And I think he's going to call him back, but it could, it could well be a yellow card here. That was the foul committed by Andy Comerford. And I think it's fairly certain that the referee is going to give him, yes, a yellow card. It's the first of the match. Well, we had far too many yellow cards and red cards yesterday. Let's hope this doesn't creep in here. Ball has been brought right back. Eugene Clunan's back there. He was hoping to take it from a reasonable distance. Now, is he being absolutely optimistic because he is just on the 45-meter line or thereabouts? That's from his own goal. He feels he can do it, Gerard, when he does let him have it. It's dropping in, and he's not in there to help out. Fergal Healy is. Michael Kavanagh picks it up for uh, Kilkenny, and Michael Kavanagh gets the clearance away downfield. Clunan's back down there still, in there in the thick of the action. Beaten for it by John Power. Laying it off in here towards Charlie Carter. A lot of work to do still. Charlie trying to lob it in towards DJ Carey. It's won well by Michael Healy. They get it out towards Cahill Moore. And again, a stalemate situation. Brown isn't going to help all of this this afternoon, and it's going to be a throw ball. And Eugene Clunan has now made his, back, his way back up towards Noel Hickey. The referee didn't like the nature of the pull there. And he's awarding a free. It's a free to Kilkenny for a dangerous pull, and Henry Shefflin's coming out to take it. Also, the referee is scribbling a number into his notebook. It's that of uh, Cahill Moore. Just one yellow card so far. Henry Shefflin hitting this one, giving it plenty of elevation and putting it over the bar for his third point. But he is Kilkenny's only scorer, and all of their scores have come from freeze. And here we are with about 21 minutes gone in the game. At the moment, sir, when that free was taken, Shefflin started to walk back in and Greg McKinney gave him a slight rattle. Now, whether they don't press out or not, I don't know, but the ref is going to have to come in and have a chat with both of them. If he talks to don't fire, Greg could be in trouble. Well, it's worth bearing in mind yesterday that when the two sendings off, which were so controversial, happened, the referee in question, Pat Horan, did not see the incident. It was the linesman who brought it to his attention, and that's when he acted. Now, what's the action of the referee here going to be? It's Gregory Kennedy on the left, Henry Shefflin on the right. It's worth nothing more than a yellow card, I think. Paul O'Connor has been fairly busy in this game. You see, Gerard Umpire saw Shefflin shove him back, but what he didn't see was the first shove by Kennedy. But both of them are getting the yellow card, and they'd want to behave themselves now. Well, it's been going on for a little while, that's for sure. So now three yellow cards in all of the game. Let's hope it settles down and we get a decent hurling match. We're not getting that yet. Grimmins with the puck out. Up towards Mark Kearns. Catches it well, turns nicely. That's good hurling. Simple and effective stuff from Mark Kearns from Clarin Bridge. One three to three points. Straight from the puck out, a great catch here by Kearns. Beat Eamon Kennedy to it, turned well, and hit it straight over. Cahill Moore under pressure over there with John Hoyne. Hoyne hasn't got into it yet. That's well blocked down by Comerford. Well blocked down again. Player trying to get the ball out there. Was uh, Liam Hudgens the captain? And it ends up being a free. And Henry Shefflin's going across to take it just to try and eat into the Galway lead. Still only three points between the teams. And we've noticed on the far side that Dennis Byrne is being prepared. Yeah, I would think, Gerard, that Kilkenny are worried because definitely they're loose, not hurling at all. Go, we are letting them into their stride, and when that's happening, go, we're in the driving seat. 
This isn't the Kilkenny of the earlier part of the championship. But Shefflin is uh, doing his bit to keep them in touch. He's got a fourth point. He's their only scorer. Four from four for Henry Shefflin. And that's the only thing that is working positively for them so far. He's converting the freeze. Galway giving away freeze. This is again towards Mark Kearns. Kennedy trying to get it away. Forward once again here. It's not the most stylish. Tierney. It's gone uh, to the left, but it's still in play. And back there to help out is Philly Larkin. Challenged the whole time there by Richie Murray. And needing the help of Noel Hickey to get it away. Broderick trying to pick it up. We haven't seen him in the action very much either. Stealing forward here. An opportunity for Alan Kearns. And Kearns has put it wide. OK, the state of the pitch today is bound to be mentioned as a factor for the poor fare. But that's three wide so far. We're just waiting for these teams to settle down and give us the kind of flowing hurly that, hurling that they're capable of. Here comes Brian McAvoy. Lobbing it in invitingly. DJ's in there, Henry Shefflin's there as well. And the defence realising the danger, and it's Ollie Canning here coming away with it. Tidy work by the cornerback, outside to Alan Kearns. A huge one forward up towards Eugene Clunan. Joe Rabbit breaking it down. Nobody able to take command of the situation just yet. Rolled up onto the stick here, Rabbit. And it's blocked down well by Kennedy. Kavanagh going across, having to try and dispossess Fergal Healy here. Promising situation for Galway. Clunan, the angle shot, difficult angle. He's put it over the bar. That's a goal and a point, and two points now for Eugene Clunan. And Galway with a one-goal advantage. Here we had Fergal Healy out there, giving it away to Eugene Clunan, and Clunan from the tightest possible of angles. That was a great score. James McGarry's puck out. Cahill Moore letting it drop down. Comes to John Power, taking it past Hodgins. Firing this one in and getting Kilkenny's first point from play. Scored by John Power. One of the great players at centre-half forward and there's just two between them. That's that this was wonderful play by John Power in his 36th championship match. Hard to believe, Jordan, that that's Kilkenny's first point from play. That's one again here by Kearns. Mark Kearns driving it, but he's put it wide. A lot of chances for Galway in this first half. Yeah, Jordan, uh, Kilkenny be slightly worried that Mark Curran's at the moment is getting all the high balls on him and Kindy, and he's okay, he's getting another one over the bar and putting another one wide, but at least they're not going back into the, in, up the field for Kilkenny. Well, the question will be asked, I suppose, by the fans at half-time, are Galway simp or, sorry, Kilkenny simply not playing well, or are Galway refusing to allow them get any, any very much of the play? There's a ball, Jordan, I'd say. Henry Shefflin, denied space, denied possession here by Liam Hodgins. Hooked well by DJ Carey, having to go back and graft. This is the other side of DJ's. Oh, he's got a facial injury there. Gregory Kennedy defends what the referee decides because he's already been booked, remember? He's calling him aside. DJ's back on his feet. This surely is a red, and Galway are about to be down to 14 players. It looks like becoming the fourth player to be sent off. A second yellow, it's a red. Gregory Kennedy is gone. 28 and a half minutes into the first half. He was already booked, Ger, but you'll find when you see it on the replay that DJ actually slipped. It's a harsh one enough, even though he was booked. Once he, was booked, once he did that, he had to go. But like, DJ actually slipped. To be fair to DJ, he hopped up straight away. 
Yeah, he was up absolutely straight away on his feet. And Kilkenny, with the full compliment, failed to take advantage of that free through Henry Shefflin. This was it again. DJ, remember, had gone back. He'd worked hard. He was caught by the outstretched left hand of Gregory Kennedy. Down he went. Now, did this deserve a second yellow card? And did Gregory Kennedy deserve to be sent off? Yeah, but the trouble is, Ger, it was the first yellow card as a problem. He shouldn't have got caught the first time. That time is OK. Referee is again being called down into the action. Derek Hardyman is marking Henry Shefflin. He's gone in as a makeshift right corner back. Young player from Mulya. Ger, both Shefflin and, Ger and Gregory Kennedy were yellow card, and if Shefflin is anything wrong again, he's going to go as well. But it's the first time, they were just shoved in the first time, got caught for that, and therefore, you know, you're, you're walking on a, on a very steady line, you know, on a line that can get you sent off. I'm just looking around the field right now, Cyril, the extra man is Michael Cavanagh, the yeah. number two. He's standing right in front of the Kilkenny goal line area, about he'll 20 metres out. So he'll go more or less in front of the full back line, but that won't, that won't upset Paul, because he'll have two men inside, he'll actually find that he'll play well. You know, the space will open inside, you'll have Rabbit and, and Coolman in there. That's a bad miss there by Mark Kerrans, and that is seven wide so far for Galway. This is the uh, first yellow card, and this is where this happened. It was Shefflin, who seems to have started it with Gregory Kennedy. Well, that's not the first one, Jerry. There's one before that, where Greg Kennedy has come back and just bumped into him. There's nothing as such. So another talking point at half-time. Richie Murray dropping it back in, the extra man Kavanagh. Here he is, ready to mop up everything now back there in that Kilkenny area. Out by Ollie Canning, playing well. Towards Kevin Broderick, has been given very little of the uh, ball from Philly Larkin. That time there's a foul, however, and Galway win themselves a free. It's turning into a contest of free takers, Shefflin versus Clunan. Yeah, but even with the 15 men, Ger, Kilkenny still are not playing well. They're not happy with their hurling at all, and they're kind of at one another, just not flowing. Well, we've mentioned the pitch many, many times here, but really these fellas play in all kinds of weather. Here comes Eugene Clunan. That's going towards the right, kept inside there. Rabbit has it, looking for space. Down he goes, penalty. The Kilkenny backs and Eamon Kennedy in particular feel that Joe Rabbit was trying to engineer a penalty and went down. The referee says no, he was pushed. Kennedy can't believe it. Well, now surely Eugene Clunan will go for a goal here. This is where Rabbit was coming in, trying to make the most of it. They were all after him. Down he went. It was in the wrong part of the field, and Kilkenny furious. But the referee gives Galway a penalty. Yeah, Jared, it'd be a great one. He will go for this goal, and Galway probably need it down to 40 minutes. But it'd be a great goal, great score to get just before half time, about three minutes to go to the half. Me think thou dost protest too much, I think, and Kennedy, for his troubles, sees yellow. The Cats fans don't like it. Yeah, I think Kennedy did very little wrong there. Joe kind of took an acrobatic dive after getting the free, but Joe's all right. Joe Rabbit been attended to there by Dr. Brendan Day. So this is a big moment. Close to half time. With stoppages and so on, there's probably another four to five minutes to play. Clunan will hit it. James McGarry on the goal line, waiting for the action. He will surely try to get three points here. Big moment for Clunan. And it's gone over the bar. It went off a stick on the goal line. I don't think it came up all that terribly well for him. But that's it's right. a goal and three that's points right, for Clunan. All that is really in the rise. It didn't come up well. It just came up a little bit short and he's yeah. reaching for it. It was McGarry who touched it over eventually. I'm sure he was going for a goal. But the lift there just didn't quite match his ambition. Galway warming up a flare on the far side as well. 
one minute of additional time to be played. That's the reason why the referee went across there to speak to the fourth official. Charlie Carter hasn't scored. DJ hasn't scored it. Charlie Carter has now. Delighting the uh, Kilkenny fans. A typical Charlie run, making it 1-5 to 6 points. But you feel there's so much more left in Kilkenny. John Parr kicking it ahead, Charlie batting it forward to himself, picking it up neatly, getting away from the marker and putting it over the bar. McAvoy pushes, free to Galway. Yeah, I told you they're going to have a close look at McAvoy at halftime. He's not been playing well for Kilkenny. That's a very soft free, and it kind of gives Eugene Clune a chance to put go with, uh, back up to three points again. It's like a long puck competition, this. Hot, hot. Clunan, a goal and three. Three out of five so far from Freeze. And that is inside the right-hand post. He's got another. The match ticks into stoppage time. End of the first half. Good score. But it was a soft free given away by Brian McAvoy. Fergal Healy way back there. Back with him was Stephen Graham. Forward by Alan Kearns. Rabbit racing after it. Kavanagh coming out to try and deny him. This is the extra player on this Kilkenny team. He wins it, number two, Kavanagh. Oh, cross towards Philly Larkin. Couldn't quite take the situation under control. And the referee in the end, once that clearance had been made, blows his whistle. A jersey tug. Some of the fans thought it was half-time. Still a few seconds left. A goal between the teams. Galway the happier but for all that they've lost a vital player in Gregory Kennedy Kilkenny haven't been allowed to play their flowing hurling McGarry a long one down towards John Power Liam Hodgins rising up needing the assistance there of Cahill Moore one scored a goal and three points in an Ireland semi-final 96 that was against Wexford Michael Cavanagh here dropping it back in here towards John Hoyne, the team captain. Comerford was coming on to it. Liam Hodgins. Tucking it away. End of the first half. It hasn't really been a satisfactory first half by any manner of means. Two teams who are capable of playing a great deal better. Eugene Clunan outfoxed the Kilkenny defence with a goal after four minutes. But the truth is, he was probably trying to get a point on that occasion. It dropped short and dropped in over James McGarry. Another talking point was the sending off of Gregory Kennedy after 28 and a half minutes. And at half-time, one between them. It's uh, this way it's me to Kenny Selector. What's your view of the way your team are playing? I'd like to be playing better, but whether or not it's going to be a dogfight at the end, I think it's a very uh, tough game. Conditions are not ideal, but like uh, it's whichever team wants the most will win it. How much of a bonus has the, the sending off been to you? That's unfortunate that any guy gets sent off. Like we see the game yesterday, like uh, you know, unless you unless you had to make use of him, he, he's no good. The extra man is no good to you, like, and it's very hard to make use of the extra man. Like, once again, you've chosen Michael Cavanagh to be your extra man. Sorry, you've chosen Cavanagh to be your extra man. So Tosman's actually got to choose it for us. So we're going to have a think at half time. Thanks, Jerry. Cheers. No ski in this fight ready to bring it up to the other end of the field and you can see that the crowd's reaction to where it's been placed is not exactly a satisfactory one and Noel Skeen goes into the scoreboard Noel Skeen, the goalkeeper a fluke obviously but uh, it was the tonic they wanted yes I mean it was important I mean that Galway take the game to Kilkenny from the start and here we see Eugene Clunan laying up for free certainly I mean his intention is to put the ball over the bar uh, James McGarry in, in the uh, Kilkenny goal certainly looks as uh, thinks the ball is going over the bar and I give credit to James he's, he's never slipped on occasions oh, like that before yeah. but this is a bad mistake to, to make at the start of the game he's kind of standing behind his line tipping the net as if the ball has just gone over the bar and it, it ends up in the back and it's, it's a great start for Galway and they went on to build on that and they got a few scores and they've really put it up to Kilkenny and if, if we thought before the match that we were going to wait 27 minutes for, Kil for Kilkenny to get their first score from play we yeah. would never envisage that
Yeah, you happy with the way that things are going, Pete? Yeah, happy enough. Um, disappointed that we're down to 14 men because it is a big advantage as we saw yesterday. Probably not as big as advantage as yesterday because the ball is moving a little bit better today. Yeah. And we see um, that Kilkenny has adopted the same tactic as Nicholas English. They're playing the man in, in defence, you know, trying to mop up the lively Galway forwards. It's going fairly well for Galway. It's a good start. The goal, as Tomás says, is a tonic that you need when you're underdogs. It settled them down. They missed a few chances, though, in front of goal that they could have ruled later on. Yeah. But overall, I'd be happy enough at halftime, yeah. What about the sending off? Now, Greg Kennedy had already been booked, Tomás, and then this incident happened. Did he deserve to go for this? No, I don't think he deserved to go, Michael. Um, see, when you see the ball coming out here, DJ picks the ball he's gone up the touchline and certainly DJ has the intention okay it looks bad on picture there right and DJ's intention was to step inside um, he, he kind of moves the body down it certainly was a yellow card offence Michael but I would give out to Gregory Kennedy was for the first yellow card that he got right there was a, a, a bit of a a yeah. barney between himself and Henry Shefflin, the two of them got yellow cards, right? Now, it isn't for the second one, really, that you're saying he's been sent off. Sure. It, it was a yellow card offence in that effect, but it's the first one that he got. It was a ridiculous yellow card for mm -hmm. And yeah. it put himself in trouble from day one. Yeah. And then, Pete, we all saw all kinds of drama down here at the canal end goal. Again, there wasn't a sending off here. Should there be? And should there have been a penalty in the first case? Watching it live is, is difficult enough to say, but here we see a long ball from Clunan in. And Rabbit does very well to get on the end of it and catches it. He comes into the middle of the square, and really, to be honest, like he's going nowhere there. The defenders have him rounded, he has nothing to do, so he kind of throws himself down backwards. Now, he did have a go at, 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 at Eamon Kennedy getting up off the ground. Uh, you'll see where, where, where he hit him in the back of the leg. Now, Eamon Kennedy has a go at him then as well. Uh, from the penalty, Clunham did the right thing. He really went high. He was maybe saying, I'll go for a goal. If I get it lucky enough, if I yeah. don't, I'll take the point. Uh, the Kennedy incident, uh, it was hard to see whether it was contact, whether there wasn't. Uh, again, it would have been hard to name Kennedy to get sent off, but it was no less than an offence than yes, what Gregory Kennedy got sent off. It probably would have been harsh to most, but the crowd, obviously, the Galway crowd, anyway, were baying for him to be sent off. Yes, it looked, I mean, it, it looked from where we were sitting as well, Michael, that there was a punch thrown or something like that. He made a lunge at, 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 at uh, Rabbit, but I don't think that's the case. And certainly, I mean, Rabbit getting up off the ground, there's a bit of contact with him and Kennedy at that stage when he's coming off the ground, yeah. when, the, when, the, when the penalty is actually given. If we see it now, little nook here, yes, yeah, does it yeah. nook, right? I, it's just a kind of a push away more than anything mm -hmm. else. And uh, I don't think that was a sending off offence either. Uh, not uh, unlike uh, Gregory yeah. Kennedy. He's very unfortunate to be sent off as well. He was, but you're right, Tom. I know Gregory Kennedy, and, and he's a player that pushes to the limit, and you don't use up one of your chances yeah. for nothing. Yeah. And that's or, what he did. OK, gentlemen, we must take another commercial break. We're back out. Anthony Cunningham down towards the two-man attack, no lane, and Joe Cooney, Cooney looking for goal number four, this is amazing! The great Joe Cooney in 1986, they're ready to start the second half. Away, and I've noticed that Philly Larkin has now been given the job of being the spare man, and he's operating uh, round about the half-back line still, we'll see just how effective he can be in that particular role as David Tierney carries it down here towards Joe Rabbit. Fergal Healy has been taken off the Galway team, by the way, and Brian Higgins has been introduced. And uh, I noticed Dennis Burns being prepared as well. I'm not quite sure is he in the game just yet as Richie Murray knocks it in towards Eugene Clunan, carried out over the end line there by J.J. Delaney. And that's going to be a 65, the first of the match. Just uh, one interesting little fact about the sending off of Greg Kennedy after 28 and a half minutes, our understanding is that if Galway get through to the final, he would be eligible to play that final in three weeks' time. I suppose, Cyril, one of the tactics here for Galway has to try and be to keep DJ scoreless. Yeah, because if DJ scores, uh, Jerry has the effect, his score seems to count more than other Kilkenny people. But Gal Galway have a good uh, tactic to under. Brian Higgins brought on for Fergal Heaney. Brian is a regular wing back, and that'll steady the backs. And like there is space up front, you know, like with five forwards, there's more space than with six. Clunan striking it with tremendous accuracy. He's now got a goal and five points. of goal, well, not more than half of goal was tally. Eight points in all, really, a goal and five. Only other scorers have been Joe Rabbit and Mark Kearns. That's a great start to the second half for Galway. It spills around loose. Remember, Kilkenny now are attacking into that goal, which is probably worst affected by the rain, incessant rain we had here yesterday. 
right on the line this time, stopped by Joe Rabbit. Taken down well and hit away out of danger by J.J. Delaney. Here comes the substitute, Brian Higgins. 14 men Galway, remember. Alan Kearns coming forward here in front of an attendance of 34,301. It's also noticeable now, Joe, as well, that Kilkenny have got Philly Larkin loose. He's playing just around in the half-back line as such. They have two men in the full-back line, and Philly is the loose player as such. It's Eamon Kennedy to hit this one. Eamon from Dunhamagan. Broken down by Brian Higgins there. And that is Liam Hudgens. Taken here confidently by Eamon Kennedy. Up in towards the forwards. Again is Hodgins. Opportunities. Curran saved by McGarry. Mark Curran's shot. Up towards Henry Shefflin, but it's won again by Galway. They're really fired up for the contest here, and it's Cahill Moore. Dropped in there dangerously towards Joe Rabbit and Rabbit was pushing and shoving Noel Hickey there and it's going to be a free out from the All-Ireland Champions. Yeah, you'll probably find as well, Joe, now that they'll soon be on Dennis Bourne. There's no, there's no scoring power in front of Kilkenny at the moment. Well, it's interesting how Galway are deploying their forces for the second half. Two men in the inside forward line, Clunan and Rabbit. Eddie Brennan is being prepared on the far side, ready to come in here to play in his sixth championship match can be a scoring sensation Brennan McGarry with the free big one up there towards Graham that's Stephen Graham there trying to make some headway dishing it back here towards Andy Comerford 45 meters out great block down initially by David Tierney Comerford trying to persist drive back free to Kilkenny and Henry Shefflin coming out to take it boy is the one who's about to make way in fact it's Stephen Grehan I think who's going off well there's the fresh man in Eddie Brennan coming in in fact for McAvoy but I saw Grehan going across there as well meanwhile it's Henry Shefflin and he's put it up over straight between the posts and it's a fifth point from a free for Henry Shefflin. Three between them. Only five minutes gone in the second half. Graham was going across the sideline, but that was because he was discarding his helmet, I think. The puck out is by Michael Crimmins. Graham into the challenge, beaten for it, however. Forward there by Richie Murray. Low pick up here by Alan Kearns, operating just outside the inside forward line, more of a half forward line. Andy Comerford on his left hand side, driving it up towards DJ Carey, batted down there. John Power beaten for it here. And that's taken away by Brian Higgins. In towards Eugene Clunan. Onto it is coming Richie Murray. In from midfield. The angle shot by Murray, and he has put it to the left. Several yards away from the left hand upright. between today and yesterday over 70,000 people have been into Croke Park to see the two semi-finals the replay yesterday won of course by Tipperary and this afternoon's second semi puck out this time aimed towards Henry Shefflin Higgins is marking him that's away by Derek Hardiman broken down here here's the spare man Philly Larkham but there's a, a couple of Galway men after him needing Noel Hickey to whip it back down into the Galway half. Brian Higgins getting it back there, starting well, the substitute. Mark Kearns picking this one up, has support, he's got, a, he's got a free, he was fouled. So a free to Galway.